I was never gonna be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. You know that I was in uh, Generation Iron, the second one, right? <laughs> oh yeah, which show were you, you were at? I was I was in a clip with Terrence Ruffin when we first oh. like got when we first were IFPB pros and we were doing some some arm stuff. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, of, we, of we course. We we were in a uh, Tampa, I think, right? In Tampa, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. It's good to uh, see you again, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember that sequence. It was like some kind of it was a. Um, it was a facility um, Dr. Jacob Wilson runs it out there with his team. Yeah, it was like some muscle stimulation thing. I mean, they use it now. They bring it out in the gyms in a cart. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. And, and they use that, so it's got blown up since then. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, yeah, it's good to see you again, man. Um, I was looking forward to this interview. Oh, I'm ready, man. I'm, I think that a lot of the topics that uh, we can cover are some things that just – you know, people don't graze, you know, graze over. They don't really see the, you know, there's a lot of uh, dark points in bodybuilding and these uh, dark points need to at some point come to light. Interesting. You know, obviously, I don't know exactly what you're going to say. You know, I look forward to it. You, know, you <laughs> might you might catch some uh, some heat from people. I don't know. We'll see, I guess, you know. You know, at this point, I don't represent anybody but myself. You know, I don't... I, I mean, I, I would love to say that I represent the IFPB still because, you know, without the IFPB and the NPC, like, I wouldn't be at any anywhere at the point that I am now. You know, they were I'm allowed to have that type of platform. But, you know, when you speak truth, you're going to you're going to hurt some feelings on the way. Sure. Sure. Well, OK, so la last week you made headlines, you know, um, because of your announcement. You basically said that you're retiring from bodybuilding at the age of 33, I believe. Right. Yeah. And you're walking away from it, and you're walking in good health, and you're doing it because you don't want that for that to change, right? So, of course, yeah. Can you clarify exactly what you mean by that, and sort of like well, what made you what made you make that decision? Well, it's something that's been I've been thinking about for quite a while, actually. It's not something that just sprung up on me out of nowhere, and you know, oh, I'm gonna I'm going to retire. Um, I just didn't feel that announcing it. Uh, in other times that I wanted to announce it wasn't right because, you know, we did have a lot of, you know, random deaths going on this year, you know, whether we could link it to due to health or anything like that. I thought that it wasn't a right, it wasn't the right time to express the retirement um, while we were still in conversation about the people that had passed away uh, this year. So, uh, it hit home, you know, really close to me, especially my trainer, um, Carlos, uh, Carlos Rodriguez, he's been training me for the last three years and he had, you know, a, a heart condition this year that, you know, he was lucky enough to pull through and me seeing that, experiencing that and living through that, seeing his kids and, you know, the recovery that, uh, that he had to go through really set home for really, you know, hit home for me. And it's like, man, is it really worth the competing is it really worth the health ramific ramifications later on in life and uh for me it just it didn't work I, like I, I at that point i'm like you know what i don't want my parents to go through this i don't want my family to go through this at some point so let me get out while i'm still ahead my health is very good this year i didn't compete this year i've been just on trt this year i get i get my blood work done every three months so i'm at the best health the best weight that I've been in my entire career. And I just want to maintain that. Did you have any complications with your health before, prior to the, prior to this? Kind of like the normal things that people go, you know, once they get off cycle, sometimes your blood pressure is a little high, uh, your cholesterol is a little bit out of whack. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have any, any situations with my heart, but my weight in itself, it's very, it's very difficult for a guy that's five, five to carry over 200 pounds, at least for me. I'm not built to be 200 pounds. I'm a 175, 180 max. But when I'm starting to push that 212, when I was trying to be in the 212, I had to force everything. I had to force training. I had to force food. I had to force the drugs at such a high level that I could not see myself sustaining that for, you know, over a year. And I'm like, this is too much, man. Like that reality sets in really fast. The, the, the drugs, the food. 
And, you know, when you force yourself to do things like that and push your body to that extreme, there's no light on the other side. I mean, it's just, it's going to be terrible once, uh, you know, once the reality strikes in that, that your health is at risk. And then it's too late at that point. Do you attribute a lot of the problems, um, a lot of the health issues that bodybuilders deal with specifically to steroids? Or do you think is other, other factors involved as well? I think it's uh, a multitude of components. I think that probably the first one is going to be just the bodybuilder itself is neglecting the fact to get blood work done, neglecting the fact to make sure that their, you know, their cholesterol is good and their blood pressure is good. I think that that's the first thing. The first thing is going to be on the bodybuilder itself to make sure that they are getting this, these, these tests done, getting an echocardiogram. All these things are very important. Now, on the other hand, yeah, of course, the drugs every single year you see the the extremes of the sport continue to, you know, we push the limit every year, somebody that's bigger, somebody more shredded. And a lot of these bodybuilders, especially the ones that are coming from the NPC, think that the only way to get to that level is to continue to push the drugs. And, you know, I think that we live in a society nowadays that we want that instant gratification. We want that right now. So if that comes down to me pushing the limits to the drugs most people are probably going to do it but a lot of people say you know and this i, I actually want to ask you this question right because yeah. you openly the only reason i'm asking you this question is because you openly admitted to using steroids right i would never yeah. ask if you're not comfortable talking about it, i would never ask you but you openly you know prior to this interview you openly talk about this right so yeah um a lot of people say well steroids are just a small percentage what goes into bodybuilding in order to, it's all about hard work, genetics, dedication, right? Yes or no, in your opinion? 100%. I mean, I've competed against guys, even when I was an amateur, that, you know, they just, they took maybe, I've seen their cycles before, double the stack that I do. But a lot of the times, you know, genetics plays a huge part. You know, genetics plays a big role. Your training plays a big role and the food and your diet plays a huge role. The steroids is a very, is a very small portion, a very small part of the entire formula. But at the same time, that's the one part of the formula that can end up killing you. By the way, why, why were you so comfortable? Because I remember I, I was watching a video by um, More Plates, More Dates. You know, um, he's, a, he's a YouTuber. I'm sure you know about yeah, him. Yeah. He, he made a video about you. Yeah, he was talking about how you openly talking about every all the compounds that you were taking, and my question was like, why? Why did you feel so? Because you know a lot of bodybuilders don't talk about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe privately, of course, they talk about it, but they would never openly talk about these things. Why, why were you comfortable doing that? So when when I first became a pro, I got immediately sponsored by Muscle Tech. It was a great experience. Muscle Tech is a great company. I got to see a, a lots of different parts of the world, things that I probably wouldn't have done if I wasn't, you know, with them. The problem is, is that when you're sponsored by a company like that, you kind of have a muzzle. You can't talk about certain things because then it reflects the image of the company. So I was always comfortable with talking about the realities of bodybuilding because I, I think that it's very important for people that get excited, newcomers that get excited about bodybuilding and want to compete, they need to know the reality of it. And I could not speak about that when I was sponsored with them. As soon as my sponsorship ended, I dedicated my page to do a lot of Q and A's. And I would say that I'm probably one of the first guys to openly do the Q and A's and do like, almost like ask me anything. And I will talk about everything. Uh, that was partly, partly it. I, I felt like uh, I was more myself when I could be honest with my audience. Um, secondly, I think that when you are trying to market yourself and, you know, I have my business, my waist trainer business, um, and I market it through social media. I think it's very important that when people respect the fact that you are telling them the truth about whatever you do, whether it's your cardio, your diet, your drugs, I think that build, it builds a form of trust with the people that are listening to you. And therefore, when you market a product to them, they're going to trust you to purchase that product. So as I did, as I spoke more and more about the, you know, realities of steroids and, and all my Q and A's, it really drove my business too, because it created that trust with the, uh, with the audience. So that was a, that was a big part. As you started sharing information about your 
usage of steroids. Have you gotten any pushback from from anybody in the industry like you should maybe not do that? No, I think that the pushback first came when I first started bot, like when I first became an IPV pro, because at that time, nobody talked about it. Nobody was openly talking about steroids. It was it was very taboo. You talk about it with your friends, but you definitely don't put it out on social media or anything like that or YouTube. You definitely don't do that. So in the very beginning, I was getting pushback. But again, it's very difficult for me to fabricate who I am. And I really thought that by having all these years of, of experience competing as a teenager in teenage nationals all the way into my 30s, I thought it was very important to put that information out there and not hold it in and share that so that, you know, even if it reaches one person and, it, you know, it, they second guess maybe something that they're doing because they heard me talk about it in another way, I think that it's worth it. You know, another thing people are going to probably criticize you for is obviously, you know, you're coming out right now and you're saying that, you know, there's ramifications for, for, for the steroid use and et cetera, et cetera, right? But people are going to be like, well, I'm sure you knew that going into this sport, right? I mean, of course. I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows that it's an extreme sport at the end of the day, right? I mean, I mean, you have to be a dumbass to not go into this sport and be, and at some points be so deep into it that you don't just sit back and be like, okay, like I understand the risks. I have to outweigh the risks to rewards. And if one outweighs the other, then, you know, I go with, I go with what I feel at this point in my career, the risk outweighed the reward. And that's just bottom line. So I, I think that, um, you know, that, and, and then post it's something that I want to talk about too, is something what most bodybuilders don't understand is the mental state of the retirement and what type of mental struggles struggles you're going to go through once you retire or once you decide that I'm going to retire. Those mental struggles are just as hard as the mental struggles that you go through while you're competing. Do you think, and don't take this the wrong way, I really want to know yeah. an opinion. You, you said the risk was uh, was way more than the reward, right? If you, let's say, won like a Mr. Olympia competition or somewhere on that level, do you think it you would have not retired, you know what I'm saying? You would have continued because the reward would have been... It would be tough to say because I would have to see what my businesses are like. What kind, what kind of businesses am I doing in bodybuilding? Can the businesses be sustained without me competing? And that's what I had to weigh out right now. Is, is the extra, I don't know, $100,000 in sales or whatever that I may, may put in my pocket each year while competing... 10 years down the road, are the, is that money going to be worth me having potentially some health issues? And that was easy for me. I'm like, absolutely not. I could go find another job. I could go get something else, you know? I continue with my waist trainer business. So I think it's very important that these bodybuilders just don't put all their marbles in bodybuilding. You need to do something outside of it. Build a, uh, a reputation with, with clients to train them. Uh, come up with a niche product. Like I came up with the niche, the niche product. I push the the waist trainers and the creams. Come up with a niche product, bands, whatever whatever it may be. But do not rely just on the stage check is what I'm trying to get at. And I think that that's the reality. Once once that your time is up, your time is up. There's a new crowd coming in that's going to take your spot. So it's again very clear. It's very important that that you do something outside of bodybuilding could be related to bodybuilding but you get that going so that the day that you do retire you're not caught flat-footed a lot of people i'm not going to say names but a lot of people in the industry right they say if you use steroids properly right for bodybuilding and you get checked at a doctor they 100 percent safe um what what do you think what, what do you say to that I mean, are we going to, are we actually going to debate the, and this is not a hit to you. This is just me speaking out loud. I'm like, uh, actually a debate on if Trembolone is good for you. <laughs> I mean, uh, if D-ball is good for you, if taking anti-estrogens, you know, to regulate your hormones, is that good for you? No, no, not, not good. No, no, they're not saying it's good. They're saying it can be, you can use it safely. You can use it safer, I would think, maybe. But still, it's still it's still all a risk. I mean, look at I don't even have to point out. Look at the situations that are happening. I mean, it, it doesn't even have to be steroids. It's just it's just the stress of the dieting and the stress of the making weight and all. I've done it all. 
I think I think even just making weight is more deadly than the steroids in the short term. Way more dangerous. I had to do some crazy to make weight. And I look back and I'm like, dude, I should have like I should have been at the ho- I should have been in the hospital, you know, heart palpitations and stuff from the diuretics and, you know, going through trying to get down 10 pounds in, you know, a couple hours, some crazy stuff. So I think at the end of the day, again, is that is that people are going to have to outweigh for themselves risk versus reward. And if they can warrant the fact that they are getting more of a reward from this, all power to them. Do you think genetics play a big part when it comes to having side effects of the steroid, the negative side effects of the steroids, meaning that some people can get away with much more and some people get totally, totally messed up very fast? I think so. I mean, it's it's just like smokers. You might have a guy that smokes for a year and he has cancer and then you get a, a pack a day smoker that's been smoking for 30 years and is good. I mean, am I going to am I going to try to be the third, you know, the 30 um, year smoker? I wouldn't want to be that. But there's still that potential risk regardless. I think that genetics plays a, a huge role in it. And we're just we're, f- you know, flipping a coin at that point, you know. Uh, I don't I don't have any history in my family of heart disease or anything like that. And so I'm lucky in that aspect. But, you know, for others that may be competing right now, that maybe they have, you know, uh, some parents or family members that do have heart problems, they're obviously going to be at a higher risk, not saying that anything will happen to them, but just there's a risk factor there. 